Hey guys, I'm John, I'm Eric, and this is Knife Making Tuesday, week 43. Uh, this week I want to do a quick Norseman update and then get on to the big news, the new project that we're doing. So for Norsemans, um, we've been hanging out to a few of them, uh, people who've ordered and want them later. And so we've been playing with the anodizing and got some really, really insane colors. Because it's a honeycomb, you can anodize the flats one color and the pockets another. So this is blue with bronze flats and bronze edges that have been polished. And the clip has a bronze edge with a blue flat. It just looks ridiculous. This one that you did. Yeah, this one was fun. Um, got a request to do gold and purple. So we got some purple. See that color. And then there's some gold. Gold in the pockets, purple on top. I made it all really shiny. The edges are super shiny purple. And then uh, gold spacers. Yeah. And the other one you did? Yeah, <clears throat> so I was uh, recently over in Seattle and Bellingham visiting some old friends and I saw an old friend, Brian, who actually had a, an old custom Strider. And this knife was awesome, but they're doing a few training videos in the next couple of weeks and he offered to just use one of our knives in the training video. What kind of training video? A uh, tactical, I don't know, poking things yeah. kind of video. Um, <clears throat> So yeah, he wanted something a little bit rugged. So this is what I did. I did a bronze handle, super etched. So it looks kind of rugged. Um, and then I tumbled the handle, as well as etching the blade and tumbling that. So we have a really big announcement. Uh, I alluded to it in the last week's video. Very interesting. Yes, very, very sneaky. <laughs> um, in November, November 6th to the 9th, uh, Eric and I are hosting a CNC knife making class at Tormac um, at their facility. We're going to use their machinery and their classroom space and we're going to host uh, a class for three and a half days how to use their machinery to make, um, make knives and it's going to be incredibly fun. Uh, class is limited to 10 spaces. Um, Here's a link to their website, right here. And um, yeah, so we've got the next uh, six weeks to get ready for that and design a knife that we're going to that we're going to make in the class. Uh, I want to make a knife, or I want the class to make a knife for themselves. Like each of the ten people get to make one for themselves and take it home. Um, at the moment, I only know how to make folding knives. But I, there's no possible way to make a folding knife in three and a half days no. for ten people and teach them how to do it. It's not going to happen. Um, so we're going to make a fixed blade. Now, we're not really fixed blade kind of people. No. Um, but, you know, I appreciate them and I think they're cool. And uh, we only have a few of them. Here's one. This is the first knife I ever got for my uh, 11th birthday. My grandfather, or my godfather gave me this. It's a um, D.H. Russell belt knife, a Grauman. Love this knife. But it's sort of the size and feel and weight and stuff that I want the new knife to be. Um, and it's got a really nice leather fitted case and all that. So the new knife that we're designing, it's going to be called the Tor, which is a two-part name. Um, Tor is kind of a Nordic name, sort of means Thor, the god of thunder. Uh, it's just another variation of that. And also it's short for Tormach, who, who I'm building the knife for, for this class. So Tor works fine. Uh, I really like the name. So it's going to be about 8 inches long, made of probably 154, no, CPM 154 uh, metal. It's going to be 530 seconds thick and use black or olive drab G10 handles. And everything's going to be CNC machined, just like our folders. And it's going to be sort of Norseman-ish in shape and size and stuff. A little bit smaller. So the next several weeks of Knife Making Tuesday are all going to be about the tour pretty much. 
maybe with other projects thrown in the mix too, but mostly about the tour. Uh, we have to prototype it, we have to get it ready, we have to write the code and make sure that it's perfect so we can take the code to their facility and just run it without too much headaches, hopefully. I've spent uh, the day so far designing the knife, and I think I got a pretty solid design down. Really happy with the way it looks. Whenever I design something, I always like to have a starting point. So I collect a bunch of pictures of things that I like and ideas that I see here and there, and I sort of pick and choose ideas and things to start out with. Um, so I usually Google, find all these websites, and save all the pictures, and pick and choose various things here, and start to formulate an idea, a plan of what I want my uh, my thing, whatever it is, to look like. Um, I'm not the kind of guy that can just sit down with a pad and paper and write down a hundred ideas and, and draw them up. I like to visualize it, so that's why I like to see other people's work first and then not copy them by any means, but use their work as a starting point and pick and choose ideas and then my ideas organically come come through when I start to design it in CAD. So right here I'm looking through all these websites um, just trying to find ideas and things that I want my blade to look like and then uh, from there I'll go into CAD and and try to figure it out. Right here I'm looking at uh, screws from USI Knife Maker. These are chain ring bolts that I think I'm going to be using. So right here I've got uh, CAD software up and I'm in super fast forward. I'm designing the chain ring bolts so that I know it'll fit exactly inside the handle um, with the length and width and height and all that stuff. And then from there I can build the handle and make sure that it fits and clears and everything works great. Um, for this knife I'm going to be using G10 handles. Now I've never worked with G10 but I think it'll be fairly easy to machine and uh, do whatever I need it to do. This is one of the early prototypes of the blade. Um, notice how the handle is slightly undersized with the tang of the blade. I kind of like that look and I think it'll fit really good and it'll machine quite nicely. Um, and here's a uh, more finished um, design with a very contoured handle using black G10 and all the contours will be 3D machined. And then I'm, there's a picture of a Norseman just for a visual size comparison. Like I said, I like to have a starting point. I know the Norseman is this big and then I know the Tor is going to be this big. Hey guys, uh, just uh, out here working and I realized that I should probably be filming a little bit of what I'm doing. So I'm doing a, kind of making a little special edition knife for a friend of ours. He's going to use it in a, a training video. And I'm just having fun with etching blades, handles, making it kind of rugged looking. So here we are. Alright, so here's the blade. I uh, etched it in ferric chloride for about four minutes, I think. Four and a half, so it got quite dark. Uh, this was the first one I did at uh, two minutes. So yeah, I etched them and then uh, have a little jug here with some ceramic stones, triangles. Uh, just some Dawn dish soap and a little bit of water. And I've just been shaking them up. So that's the blade, turned out really cool. It was a, a stone washed blade in the first place. So it had a, a nice rough finish already. But yeah. And then show you what's in here. Stay. Let's see if they're done. Actually, I'm gonna go rinse these off. Now, I had initially just uh, planned on etching these, the handles, and uh, making them a nice bronze. <laughs> Give it kind of a rugged look. But after etching and tumbling those uh, blades by hand, I figured I would do the handles. So it didn't get in the pockets too much, but it just gave it a little bit of a Rugged finish, especially on the edges. But, like this backside here is the cool one. 
And it'll kind of match the blade. And the clip, which I haven't even looked at yet. Nice. Yeah. Cool. So I'm going to put that together and uh, we'll see how it looks. All right. <clears throat> so here is the knife all put together. Turn down my awesome, soothing music. And yeah. Look at that. It's such a beauty. It's a little rough, um, the action, and I'm guessing that's because, uh, you know, I etched the blade so much. But once the ceramic bearing, or ceramic detent ball, wears its groove back in, which won't take long, it'll be nice and smooth. Now if I were really cool, I would heat anodize all that hardware. Yeah, this is probably going in a tactical uh, training video of some sort. I can't remember what he said it was going to be used for, but a little awesome uh, promo, I guess. So I thought I'd spend some time and kind of screw around a little bit. But. All right, so back to more etching blades. Um, this is the first one I tried out, about two, two minutes, it's the screwed up blade there. Um, yeah, two minutes of etching and then uh, some hand stone washing, or tumbling I guess. But that was on a previously tumbled blade that had not been smoothly sanded and made prettified. So I want to try it on this pretty blade that, you know, has a hole in it, a little s screwed up spot there, and it's a little warped. So, I'm gonna etch it. All right, so here is <clears throat> that smooth, like, polished knife uh, after it's been etched for about five minutes and then uh, vigorously hand tumbled in a jar. But it looks pretty wicked. Like at the right angle, it looks really dark and aggressive. But then, like head on, it just has a powdery, smooth kind of finish. You hardly even notice that it's uh, been tumbled. And then, blam! It's not very focused, but whatevs. I'm pretty happy with it. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. I like it. 